Welcome to Inspiring People, the show about inspiring people, those who are inspired and those who inspire others. We all know them. They're good examples, they're supportive, they embrace life, they live inspiring lives in their day-to-day -day actions, and in turn, inspire others to do the same. Hi, welcome to Inspiring People. My name is Mary Otto, and with me today for part two of uh, the interview is Therese Bogle. Welcome back, Therese. Thank you. Good to have you here. And at the end of the last show that we were doing on Therese, we started talking about uh, her running career and her work or her runs in marathons and so on and I was found it incredulous at times about how far she ran and how she started so let's just give a brief review for those people who weren't able to see that part of the show when you started running and how you began your training sure sure I was um, in my late 20s and I just um, thought you know, I thought, well, I probably should be a little, um, get some exercise. So I started to, you know, run just a little bit. And then um, I was down in the Twin Cities at the time, and I kind of met up with a couple, a woman and her daughter, actually, that were running most mornings two or three miles around North St. Paul, where I was living at the time. So I said, yeah, I can do that, you know. So I did, you know, and I just did it. You know, we went, we went out, it was beautiful in the morning, and we went out and we ran, and, and I moved a little bit, and but I just always kept running. You know, it was, back then it was three, four miles. Um, then we moved up up here, and um, I was running, you know, three, four miles. So, and then there was a race that was advertised in Fargo that um, I didn't. I was running about six miles, and I then I but I didn't realize at the time that it was actually 15k. So I showed up to run it, and it was 9.1 miles, and I went, wow, you know, I had sore feet at the end. <laughs> and I remember I averaged like 9.07 a mile, which for me now would be very quite slow. I mean, it was, you know, okay. so I'm, you know, but it was quite. Yeah, I remember, yeah. and I, I placed in my age group because you know, there wasn't as many people running back mm -hmm. then. And I just went, wow, this is really neat. I got this ribbon, you know, for kind of, sl you know, plotting out there <laughs> for nine miles. So then it kind of built on that. You know, then I ended up going to NDSU and then, um, you know, running in the first, actually the first um, women's cross-country team that NDSU had oh, really? back in the late 70s, early 80s. Yes, okay. we were the, the very first cross-country women's team. And then, you know, I was successful there and at that. And then, then I started training for more and more, you know, half marathons and then marath And then I found I always ran long distance in college. You know, I mean, actually my best event would be a 5,000 and 10,000 on a track, you know, which is like 38 laps. But um, I found the longer I kept going, the more competitive I was. So when oh. I got up to the half marathon, I was even better. When I got to the marathon, I really reached my stride. It, it's really a good race for me, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And besides the physical fitness aspects of this, um, and you are very physically fit, so what else do you, what else do you get, get from the experience of running long distances like that? Well, I think, you know, back especially when I have two daughters, when they were young, it was a very much of a, you know, a stress. And just to get away, I was at home with the girls. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just for, that was my time to get out and to, um, and it's something I do well, so it kind of is reinforcing in itself, you know. And I'm kind of competitive, so it was something, you know, it was healthy that you could do, um, you know, for yourself mm -hmm. and then do well and then, you know, place that. So, um, and I... I like, you know, I mean, sometimes I run with others. And the, the race itself, you know, you go to these races. I just ran up at Park Rapids this last Sunday, a half marathon. And, you know, you end up seeing the same people. And, you know, it's that camaraderie of mm -hmm. um, you get a bunch of runners together and talk running. I mean, yeah. So it's not only competing against other runners, it's um, other runners. It's also competing against yourself, right? Oh, yes. In your own time. Yes, and, yes. And yes. I mean, I will never run what I read when I was 30, you know, mm -hmm. but it's all age group, you know, as I got old, you know, now that I'm, I'm older, but I can still run, you know, for my age group, I can still run well. And, mm -hmm. and it's, 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 I feel it makes me, you know, I, I deal with a lot of paperwork, a lot of sitting at school. So, you know, this is kind of my out and, and um, so I, yeah, I enjoy to compete, you know. So if, uh, for those viewers who are watching and may be interested in even starting to run you know, cross country or long distance running, what sort of uh, tips do you have for them or what sort of insights could you share with them if they're interested? Well, I just think you have to be really persistent and not expect too much to when you first start because mm -hmm. it just takes a long time to get in shape. You know, I mean, I, I never quit, you know, for all these mm -hmm. years. But if, you're, if you quit for a year or two 
it's a lot harder to come back. Although it's much easier but than if you'd never run. But you just have to be very patient with yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and start really slowly. And and I always have a goal. It's always the next race. If I, it's a marathon, I, I start a year in advance. So, you know, if you have a goal, you know, um, Detroit Lakes has races. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I've come here for their races. Yeah, Beard, you run the mm -hmm. coming up here the first weekend of September. So, you know, if you just pick one of those 5Ks, you know, it's just 3.1 miles. Um, and just. then and then just, you know, yeah, just, yeah, right. Sometimes it can be a long way. But, you know, and just plan your training to be able mm -hmm. to do that. And a mm -hmm. lot of people walk those races, you know, walk and walk, and then you can walk, run. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just good to be there and to be active and with all those, all those people that are there. Okay, so, so you have your involvement in the community with the arts and so on, and then you have your involvement um, with the running and so on. Do you have any time to do other activities or anything else that you enjoy doing? Well, we have a, a farm. It's about 50 acres. So for many years, until I went back full-time to work, um, we raised sheep. You know, we had about 100 head of sheep. And, we, and, um, and I sold those and not too many years ago because I just couldn't be home enough for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we raised some hogs, and we have a huge garden, huge, huge. I think we have 80 tomato plants this year. So oh, it's my huge. gosh. Yeah, yeah. So and so that's huge, and then you know we we raise a few pigs, and we always have chickens in layers. So if I have extra time, I'm doing things on, on the farm. What do you think your legacy will be when you look back on um, what you've done throughout your life so far? What do you see as the most outstanding pieces, or what makes you the most proud? Well, I think my community involvement. You know, back b before I even worked at, at the school, I'm a big community volunteer. You know, I have been on, like, I think every committee that Ulan Hit It All has in some capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that in the arts, you know, I'm kind of known around the school. If anybody has anything with the arts, they contact me. But um, I think, you know, b being able to bring um, that aspect of life, you know, to the community and to the mm -hmm. students at Ulan Hit It All mm -hmm. is probably would be my main achievement, I believe. So when you have some downtime, what do you like to do during that downtime? Well, we do have, I like to read, mm -hmm. yeah. I watch a little TV, but not too much. Um, but we have a book, to, I've started a book discussion group, you know, adult book discussion mm -hmm. group. So, you know, we, we, um, we you know, I focus in on reading that novel and uh, whatever I can, but I have time, mm -hmm. right. Okay, do you travel at all, or I suppose no, not when you've got not a farm? Much, not when we have a farm. No, with sheep, we never went anywhere. <laughs> oh, is that but right? now a little bit more, but not too much. Mm -hmm. not, yeah, I'm kind of, if I have, you know, I'm gone so much for, you know, this or that, or meetings, mm -hmm. and the arts, or whatever. So if I have time, I like to stay home, stay actually. Home. Yeah. And I just can't get over the 90 tomato plants. I planted three this year and have just been so proud of myself. <laughs> Those oh, yeah. three plants and some of the tomatoes actually turned red. Yeah, I know that yeah. I had to email some people and tell them that. So yeah, yeah. What, what do you do with all of those? I mean, you can them and you yes, freeze yes. them yes, and, and, and make salsa and, and all that kind of thing. Yes, okay. yes, as much as I can. And, you know, out of those, not all of them, you know, sure. quite make it. So, but sure. yeah, yeah, we plant enough and then we can give them away too. Yeah. Well, from a runner to a community activist to a mom and a wife and an avid reader, um, thank you so much. You certainly are an inspiring people. It's been a pleasure talking with you, and good luck on all the projects that you have going over there in Eulen Hit It All. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.